uh, uh, Dr. Davy said that uh, uh, we've got uh, something like, uh, well, at least 30 uh, DBA students. I thought that's a great, uh, uh, you know, that's a great start for this program. And since I come from a background of research, I thought I'll share with you uh, some ideas about research and, and maybe get some feedback from you how you want to do your research and what areas you want to focus on, all right? Uh, so, you know, originally it was supposed to be next Saturday, but uh, I, I got another program on Saturday. So we had to bring this forward, but uh, here are some of my, my thoughts on, on this slide. Uh, let me see whether I can just make it, let me get this right. Okay, let me very quickly uh, uh, share with you my, my research experience. I was chief economist at Bank Nagara. I was in charge of something like about 130 economists uh, working on the macro economy. And <clears throat> uh, the whole purpose was to, uh, as you know, what Bank Nagara does is a central bank it basically conducts monetary policy, uh, but it needs to have a very good understanding of the real economy. So um, uh, if you really look at Bank Nagara, it, it has two major reports, although they are quarterly reports, one for the annual meeting and the other one half year. The, the, so every quarter, the central bank does a survey uh, uh, you know, on the real economy and then uh, uh, actually matches the data from the monetary side, the financial system, and the real economy. And the real economy would comprise the industrial production, uh, the, the you know, GDP, as you, you would normally call it. Uh, then there's the government expenditure. Uh, and then there is the balance of payments. And you know, I, I don't want to go into the detail, but if you've done any economics, you will know that it all ties together, OK? Uh, it all ties together. And, 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 and so this exercise uh, ties it up. Now, uh, the, 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 so a, a good piece of research is consistent. It not only is consistent, it has to be coherent. Uh, so, and then out of this data that you know, we've, we've studied in each of their silos, so for example, we have a, uh, in Bangalore specialists on manufacturing, specialists on agriculture, specialists on government accounting, specialists on banking systems, specialists on balance of payments, you know, specialists on statistics. Uh, uh, and then we sit down in the big room and everybody go through these numbers. You know, do they make sense, right? Does it, in your data, what you're telling me, does it make sense relative to the other part, okay? So, you know, very, very simple. If the industrial sector saying that they're doing very well or doing very badly, right? And then you, you look at the, uh, uh, the, the banking numbers and the bank says, you know, we're lending to industry, no problem. So either the industry is having problems or the banks don't know what they're doing, right? I mean, you know, things must match up. Now, so, you know, the, 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 the one, the, and once you get a, it's not quite 360, but once you get that monetary and the real sector and the foreign sector and the industrial sector, you know, and the employment numbers all put together, you get a co co coherent story. And that's why when you go to the Bank Negara report, you, you, you get an authoritative story. What the hell is going on in Malaysia? Now, I went to Bank Negara because I was, I'm, a, I'm a chartered accountant by training, uh, although my first degree is in economics. Um, and, and I wanted to, uh, to do a flow of funds accounts for, for Malaysia. Now, those of you who know, understand what is a flow of funds, uh, 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 I noticed quite a lot of you would have done your MBAs. So uh, can I know how many people have done basic accounting? Just raise your hands. Uh, so not everybody's done accounting. Well, accounts is a very good way of tying things together. Profit and loss is a flow, right? It's, it, a flow is a change over time. A balance sheet is a point of time. 
and a point of time for your asset and liabilities. So in very simple terms, if you make money at the end of the year, your, your, your assets would have increased by the amount of money you made. You see what I'm trying to say? So one is the flow. If, you, if your income was $10 and your cost was $9, you made one extra dollar, correct? Right? You made, your profit is $1. But where does it show up in your balance sheet? Because your cash, either your cash has increased by $1 or your stock has increased by $1 or your liability has decreased by $1. You get it? Right? So it has to be stock flow consistent. That's what is meant by the, the, the importance of research to tie things together, okay? So now when you're gonna do research, what are we trying to achieve? Well, research is basically science. It's, it, it needs to explain, it needs to predict, it needs to manage, right? So the question is, something's happening. Well. If you want to do research, when something happens, what is causing it? Why is it happening? You know, so you need to explain it. But in order to explain it, you have, you have to have data, right? And with that data, you, you need to analyze that data, right? And with that data, you can look at the past and data is mostly about the past. You are able to project into the future. And, but that projection is uncertain. You're never sure of the, the, the real result. And after that, you need to manage. And that's what you do every day in your work, right? You, you receive data, you, know, you process it in your head, you manage that information, you make a decision. So research is a disciplined process to find answers to the right questions. So the question is, what is the right question? So if you want to do a doctorate, the first thing you need to understand is think, okay? You need to ask the right question. And a lot of people don't know even what the question is, right? Because they say, well, you know, the boss will know, right? The boss gives me the question, I go and find the answer. No, if you're at the doctorate level, you think for yourself. You don't accept what people tell you. You ask why, you know, what, why, and how, right? It's very critical. So the, 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 the Harvard professor, Malcolm Sparrow, you know, puts it very, very well. Pick important problems, fix them, and tell everyone. Now, this is obvious and not obvious. Because when, how did I learn from this guy? This was the year uh, 2000. I, I, was, I became chairman of the Security and Futures Commission in Hong Kong, right? And there were thousands of problems. Okay, thousands of problems, right? Every day somebody comes up to me and says, do this, you know, we gotta fix this. The stock market's going up, the stock market is going down. Uh, the brokers are doing funny things, you know, complain about this, complain about that. What's the important problem? You don't have the resources to fix all the problems. You have to pick the important problems. So in your research work, the same thing applies. What is the important problem? What is the problem that you need to fix? And then let everybody know about it. Because if you, only you know about it, it's useless, right? Your boss needs to know about it. Your staff needs to know about it. Everybody needs about it. We fix this problem and therefore we can move on. You don't fix the problem, you're gone, right? So what was the problem in, in, in um, uh, let, I want to share a lot of these war stories with you, okay? Because it's very critical. Now, the income tax department, okay? There was a consultant, you know, Malcolm Sparrow was a consultant to an income tax department. He went into the income tax department. What is the most important problem of the income tax department? Okay, so people said, well, you know, uh, they don't declare the right income, right? The second problem says, no, you know, we, 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 you know we're, we're not getting enough help on the computer to check on these guys. Do you know what is the real, the, the real problem? The real problem in the income tax department is that half the people don't even declare 
is not on the books of the income tax department. So the income tax department tax the people who are in their books. But if people are not in the computer, you can't tax them. So the key question of this consultant said, why don't you go to the yellow pages? You pick any business. You take the name out and you go to your computer. Is the name there? If the name is not there, this guy is not paying tax. Correct? You see what I'm trying to say? You need to think out of the box, right? You need to fix the important problem. And the minute you pick the important problems, you solve them, you know, Indian Revenue then collects more taxes, right? Because the minute you are in the register of the Inland Revenue, they can tax you because they can find information about you, et cetera. But if it's not in their database, they can't do anything. So the problem, the basis of the research is not to get a degree. Of course, it's very nice to get a doctorate. Oh, perhaps somebody calls you doctor. You know, it's very nice. But, you know, there are lots of people who have doctorates who don't know what they're talking about. Okay? And your job after this degree is to be able to get somebody inside the room, whether they got double, double doctorate, they got from the top university, you can tell that this guy is talking BS. He doesn't know what he's doing, okay, right? And that's what we're trying to teach you, right? Useful knowledge that has value. Asking the right key question is the key. So it's a very systematic investigation to establish facts trends and reach conclusions. So let me, let, me, let, me, let, let me share this with you. The very important thing people need to understand, and you need to get this, the only way you learn is to tell stories. I can give a very big book with you with lots of equations, and you immediately you go to sleep. Okay? And yet, if you go to YouTube and you listen to one story, Ah, I get it. You see? So people forget that, you know, the, the, the narrative is very critical. And there are two ways of telling stories. One is the qualitative, which is what I'm doing. I'm just telling you the stories. The other word is quantitative. I give you plenty of equations, plenty of numbers, right? So with stories, you have to answer the question, what's the plot? So very often you, you go and see a movie, you go and see a movie, you know, and you say, wow, that was a very nice movie, very good actor, very beautiful actress, uh, a nice storyline, somebody gets killed, somebody uh, uh, falls in love, nice story. I never look at the story like that. I think about what is this director trying to tell me? Okay, what is the moral of this story? Right? So if you, I, I'm sure you've seen the movie Godfather, right? The Godfather is a very good crime story, but it's not a crime story. It's a morality story. If you really look through Godfather, it is good guys going to America, becoming gangsters in order to, in order to keep the peace to help the community, they became gangsters. And then once they became good gangsters, good gangsters, they're not actually good gangsters, but they're moralistic gangsters, they don't get involved in drugs. Somebody said, we want to get in drugs. The godfather did not want his son, Michael, to be a gangster. He was a war hero. But in the end, the drug king killed the, the father and Michael became the godfather. And after he became the godfather, what did he do? He went to see the Pope to get forgiveness for his sins. And guess what? The Pope was murdered. All right. So it's actually about good becoming evil, evil trying to become good. Okay. So, you know, the moral of the story is very critical. And you can do this through pictures, through maps, through models, through surveys, through case studies. But Telling the story in your thesis is very important. If you write the thesis when nobody understands, you're in deep trouble. You get it? Right? So the key question then is, 
if the story is all over the place, we don't know what he's talking about. So the story is very important. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to ask? What is your solution? What is your proposals? What's your recommendations? What's your conclusions? Okay. So, you know, Robert Schiller is a Nobel laureate. And after all his studies, he came around to the conclusion economics should be narrative. And the narrative is not just the quantitative, mathematical, but also the qualitative. So it's actually both. So now, what is information? We're dealing with information. Information is data. At the bottom of the pyramid, data. Data has no value. There are plenty of data all over the place. You know what the problems with the banks are? They have tons of data they don't know how to manage. They don't analyze that data. Come Alibaba, come Amazon, they get that data. They know how to use it. They use artificial intelligence to analyze what you buy, what you sell, what you, what you do. Boom, they got value, right? What does Amazon, Amazon.com do? Amazon.com every time, or even Facebook, every time you buy something, suddenly comes up. If you have just read Godfather as a book, you would be interested in another book. So today, you are completely managed by Alibaba and Amazon in your taste, in, your, in your, what you like, what you buy. Everything is fed to you from information. Okay, So data becomes information when it is classified. It has a little bit more value. right? And then when you analyze it better, it becomes knowledge. And after you begin to see the big patterns, the big picture, you have some wisdom. And wisdom has the biggest value, right? And that's how, you know, somebody like uh, Jack Ma can make a ton of money, whereas the bankers are still stuck in their old ways, saying the customer must come to me. No. Alibaba is in your face every day. Every day you use your mobile phone, he knows what you're doing, what you're buying, what you're selling. Google knows when you go to the toilet because the GPS system exactly tracks you every day. Okay, You can actually download that. So timely, reliable information is a market fundamental. You know need to be information. And today, what's the problem? The problem is the negative information misinformation, disinformation, all play a role in your strategic decision, right? So you need to understand if when you're a doctorate, you need to understand good information, bad information, misinformation, null information. That means I don't have any information, okay? Now, this chart about entropy is that it has value, but entropy means complexity. Data is all over the place. So when data is all over the place, you don't know what is the right data. So the greater the uncertainty, the greater the entropy, all right? But that's mathematical, we can discuss that later. Now, what is the origin of wealth, right? Okay, I've, 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 I've gone, you know, uh, I need to hurry up a little bit. The origin of wealth, this is the Eric Beinhocker, who is a McKinsey guy. He wrote this very important book. You can, you, can, you can Google this stuff. He said, there are three ways of making money. The money comes from physical technology, which is science, which is informatics, biotechnology, et cetera, et cetera. The second one is social technology, networking, branding, right? They're all social technologies. You know, why do you join a school? Why do you have alumni? Because that's your social network. Why do you join a clan? You are Hakka, therefore you're part of the Hakka clan. You are you know, Malay, therefore you're, you, 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 know, you come from Kelantan. So you, 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 know, you are the Kelantan uh, uh, group, right? Okay, the Kelantan group does not necessarily agree with the Johor group, right? I mean, you know, all these are social technology issues. How do you network them together, right? Okay, then the business model. All three is needed to create wealth. Because if you don't know the business model, you don't understand what people are doing. So here's my favorite question. What does Apple sell? What is the business model of Apple? 
everybody says selling iPhone. Wrong. Apple sells a lifestyle. You use an Apple, you feel very cool. I am very nice with this white phone, white thing. My computer works perfectly with this. I can do this with AirDrop. I have the most coolest, you know, uh, 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 AirPods, right? It's selling you a lifestyle. And once you've got it, suddenly, what is, what is Apple selling you? Selling you apps. And what does the apps do? The apps tell you exactly what you want to buy, what you want to sell. And today, once you've got Spotify, once you've got Netflix, they've got you. Every month you are pay paying not only to Netflix, but you're paying Apple for the iCloud. Okay? So you need to understand what's a real business. Let me tell you how I learned what, 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 what this was. When I first got married, we need to buy, buy, buy washing machines and all this. There is a shop somewhere in Bangsa, which is the cheapest, the cheapest that anybody. So I said, wow, how do they make money? Why are they the cheapest? You know how, what, what was their business model? The business model was to sell very fast. But Panasonic, because they buy from Panasonic and sell to you, they will sell to you for cash. But Panasonic will give them three to six months credit. That six months credit, they put in the bank, they lend money, they earn a big fat interest rate. So they are a money lender rather than a quite good sales company. You get it? The business model is not the model of selling washing machines of refrigerators, etc. They work, they are actually in the money lending business. Right? And afterwards, they sell to you at a high interest rate on credit card. They make more money that way. So business model thinking is very critical. And that's why when you're talking about DBA, you need to ask these questions. What is the technology? What is the social technology? How do they organize this? Thirdly, what is the business model? So now I share this with you, right? When I was running the Fun Global Institute, after I stepped down from my Securities and Futures Commission, we were a think tank. A think tank does research, but research itself is no good. You must disseminate. You must tell everyone. That's the second part, okay? And then you must engage. So information on its own has no value. Information to me dies with me, no value to you. But the, if I share this with you, you get it, it will be valuable to you. If you don't understand it, zero value. It doesn't really matter, right? But you need to engage. It is the information. How do your kids learn? Your kids learn from you. Because when you interact with the kid, the kid gets it. The kid gets it right from day one that daddy is manja and mummy is the tough one. They know straight away, instinctively, okay? And that's the feedback mechanism that you need the engagement issue. So, you know, we were involved in four integrated and related areas. We study the real sector, global supply chains. Victor Fung, who founded this company, the Fung, the Fung Global Institute, comes from the largest supply chain in, in Asia. Now, I share this with you because it's very important. You know, he was a first Asian professor, assistant professor at that time, at the Harvard Business School. His father was running a business in Hong Kong. He called him and his brother came back and they look at the business in Asia. And they, at that time, Hong Kong was manufacturing, you know. And he said, how to make money from manufacturing? At most, you make 10%, right? You spend all your sweat getting labor, getting goods, you manufacture, and then you sell to Americans, 10% margin. He said, you know what the real margin is? Then he looked at the price in America and the price in Hong Kong, right? The price in Hong Kong was, let's say, $10. The sale price in America was $4, right? So $40. So 30% difference 
So why am I wasting my time on the $10? If I make 10% of that $3, I make $3. The fellow at $10 making 10 cents, making $1. You get it? That's smart business model. Okay? So that's real sector. Then there's finance. Then there's governance. Then there's sustainability. I'm just sharing this with you because it's war stories that you understand. Now, so you need to strategize. How do you strategize? Well, there is a SWOT model and there is a PES model, right? SWOT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. A lot of, some of you may know this, but you don't know this. But it's very important for you to do this in anything you do. What is my strength? What is my weakness? Effectively, my comparative advantage. And then in a crisis, what is the threat? What is my bottom line loss? What are my opportunities, right? So everybody thinks, wow, this is a crisis. This is terrible. Hey, that's when you make the most money, all right? So, and then you, use, you go into pest. What is pest? What's the political? What's the economic? What's the social? What's the technology? Once you begin to understand this, you are able to calculate. Sun Tzu, the art of war, do your estimations. That's how to estimate. Do your calculations. Before you do anything, am I going to win? And am I going to lose? Who is my opponent? Do I understand my opponent? Do I understand my competitor? Do I trust my partner? Do I trust my staff, right? All these are in your calculation, right? So what is the process? The simple process is actually a literature survey. And today, it's very different at my time. In my time, I had to go to the library. I had to check thousands of books, physical books, and physical journals. Today, you go to the internet, you can get anything. Anything. You can even manufacture an atom bomb by going to the internet. OK? Right? So the key question is, who has done this research before? What interesting question did they not solve? Do you have an alternative hypothesis? Is your hypothesis better than what they have done? So if you conduct this research, what conclusions do you have? Is this conclusion any use? Right? So question, question, question. What is the right question? And then you have a hypothesis. What is the right answer? It may not be right, because by the time you do the data, you do the whole thing, your hypothesis could be wrong. But learning that it is wrong is itself very valuable. You get it? All right? So now, quantitative research requires data, but qualitative analysis needs brains. OK? Now, you, if you get a doctorate, it means you are using your brain. A very wise man told me one day, there are some people who have learned all their lives only one thing. And that thing is useless. There are some people who every day learn new things and realize they know nothing. The second one is the smart one. Okay? Because a clock that is dead is right twi twice a day. Correct? Right? So you really need to think through all these problems. You have to have the analytical. You have the observational to look at the cohort. This group, what is this group doing? So for example, there is one of you who is a nursing director. What is your nursing cohort doing? Or you, you may be looking at the patients. What are your patients doing? Or you're a sales director. What are your sales team doing? What are your customers doing? Then you go into a case study. And then you can do experimental. You can try it. You try it with focus groups. You try it through surveys, et cetera, et cetera, right? You get data. The other one is descriptive. Pick a case study, right? How, do, how does this work? Well, most of the case study, Harvard case studies, 
It's about America. What the hell do I know about America? I need to know about Malaysia. Right? Okay? So, the one of the biggest reasons why I'm talking to you is that we should do in your doctorate studies case studies that apply in Malaysia. That will be good for you and good for Malaysia. You get it? Because your students, oh, I want to learn about Amazon. Yes, you can learn about Amazon. But how many people in Malaysia can recreate Amazon? We're not solving important problems. It's not that one of you may not may become Amazon, right? But you have to think about it. So we need to learn real truths, right? And this, these are cross-sectional studies. So what is the criteria of good research? Right, sorry, I beg your pardon. It's systematic, it's logical, it's consistent, it's coherent. It's empirical. You must deal with concrete data. It must be replicable. This is very important. Once you do the data, somebody comes along with the same data, I get the same results. If I do the data and I get different results, somebody is cheating or somebody is cooking the books. Okay? So nowadays you see suddenly either, you know, a lot of people get doctorates by plagiarizing or faking the data. This is very famous now. Okay? They are not true to themselves. All right? What we want you to do is to be true to yourself. At the end of this, a good doctorate is exactly like a good dish. When you finish that dish and you sweat every day doing it, and your son and a daughter or your, your grandma has a smile on her face, that's good research. You get it? Right? If they say something is wrong there, good for nobody. Now, that's when you start tuning the dish. Add a little bit of sauce, add a little bit of spice, whatever, right? But the other thing that you must remember, and this is why I, I, I told Dr. Devi that I wanted to talk to you, because a cluster of research has more value than isolated studies. What is economies of scale? Economies of scale is cluster. When everybody does different parts of the story, you get a composite picture. That is why none of us is smarter than all of us. If all of us, if 35 of you together produce different parts of a study that give us a better picture of the problems that Malaysia really face and some solutions, we would have achieved our objective. And you would have added to that knowledge. Okay? You would be not adding to yourself other than the fact that I got a DBA, right? Because when you get that DBA, the next thing is, can you deliver? And if you can't deliver, you won't go. So remember this, everything is connected to everybody through network. The fact that the 35 of you are connected to us is a network by itself. So you can, through the chat, help yourself, help each other. So if you don't have skills, you know, I don't know anything about hospitals. You know, I ask my friend who is working in the hospital. If I don't understand about marketing, somebody marketing or your friend can help you. Isn't this the same when you are all together in one place? Right? The Harvard Business School's case study is Harvard graduates sitting in the same classroom, sharing everything. But today through Zoom, through internet, we can WhatsApp, we can share everything. And that's the value of the network, right? And networks has a process. And what is the process? It's called SPISPA, right? Strategize, prioritize. Once you strategize, there's so many things, but you must prioritize what is important, what is not important. Then incentivize. You have to teach people and give incentives to do the right things. The doctorate itself is an incentive. The honor is an incentive, okay? 
The fact that somebody says you are doing good things is an incentive. Does somebody tell you you're going down the wrong way is an incentive. Because if you don't know how to hear bad news, you are a bad researcher. Okay? Then you need to standardize. You need to put it in standards that you can understand. Then you need to structurize. How do I structure this? Right? Then I go into the process design. What is the process? It's very scientific. It is very process oriented. And then you go into the execution. All this before is theory on paper. The next one is execution. My favorite phrase, vision without execution is delusion. You know what the problems of all politicians are? They tell you how great, how great, how great. They deliver you rubbish. Okay? So if you want to succeed, you not only have a vision, but you can execute. But when you execute, you're going to make mistakes. And that's why you need to review. And when you review, you go back and say, oh, this is wrong. Okay. I regroup, I retreat, right? And then I regroup, and then I advance again, okay? For what the Chinese call da da tui tui, fight, fight, retreat, retreat, okay? Because if you know how to retreat, you know how to advance. Those people who only know how to advance suddenly find themselves nobody behind them. They're dead. You get it? Very simple issues. So now, if you do the study that the company is interested in, you can even be subsidized by it. You get it? That's why if your research is useful, it will have value. If your research is useless, nobody will, will support it. So example, we're going to try and teach you Harvard case studies. I have the guy who is in charge in Hong Kong, who was the head of the Harvard Business School case study program in Hong Kong. And he will come and lecture to you, okay? Right, on this. How to do case studies. This is gold, I tell you, right? Now, so for example, just give you a simple story. How did Bayan Lepas become the Silicon Valley of Malaysia? Okay? Second, why did China overtake Penang, when in 1990s, we were the leader, right? Now, isn't it stupid? I'm, I'm, I'm using very strong words. We have electronics and engineering accounting for 50% of the exports of Malaysia, and most people don't understand how they became so successful. All I know, they're Intel, they're Motorola, but the policymakers don't understand it. Our Malaysian economists don't understand it. Our engineering departments don't understand it. And the result is they are successful in spite of government. Isn't that strange? Right? So why is it that Penang can't duplicate Silicon Valley in California? Answer, Silicon Valley is basically five universities. Stanford, Caltech, Berkeley, UC San Francisco, and San Francisco State. You get it? And what, how did Silicon Valley succeed? A successful professor has got very good students. But if the professor goes out to start Intel, his student, who then becomes professor, becomes his research department. You get what I mean? And the best students of the professor go to work in Intel as engineers. You get it? And then when Intel is successful, Intel invests, gives research grant to Stanford or Caltech or whatever to do what they need to do. So, stand, so Intel does not need themselves to do the research that they cannot afford to do. You get it? So it's an ecosystem. You know how Penang could not get up? 
when I came back to, well, I'm not from Penang. My wife is from Penang. When I came to Penang, I asked, how is it possible that Penang doesn't have its own university? It's not that USM is not a good university. You know what the government did? They moved the engineering faculty to somewhere in Para. So there was no symbiosis between the university and Bayan Lepas. Now, this is, doesn't have to be Bayan Lepas. If you're in Johor, you can work with the universities in Johor. You know, if you're in Kuala Lumpur, you can work with the universities in Kuala Lumpur. If you're in Penang, you can work with Wawasan Open University. In fact, with Zoom, you don't need to be physically anywhere. You get it? Your professor does not need to be in Penang. In fact, your professor is, I'm sorry to say this, is not so important because if we curate the right professors for you, we can get the best Harvard professor, Stanford professor. It's all in the YouTube. If you know how to go to YouTube, you can get some of the best information in the world from the best people in the world. The only problem is how do you curate this? Okay, so the other one is the study. All right, I'm running short of time. Now, there's no time for feedback, and that's uh, one of the complications. But we can have more discussions like this after you've done your first study. You need to know new tools, right? The first thing is there's a very simple way. If you see a very nice study in the United Kingdom or the US, you just take the model and say, can we apply this to Malaysia? And that in itself has value. The results may come out very differently from the UK or US because Malaysians don't behave the same, right? So do we have the data? What are the policy implications, right? Now this works if you have got very good quantitative skills. If you don't have it, you know, in fact, if you've got very good quantitative skills, you can even do simulation. You can do projection, right? That depends upon your, 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 your experience. But today you have huge data sources. Did you know that Google publishes literally mobility data for every country and every district? That means they're telling you whether you're going out of the house, whether they're going to the supermarket, whether they're going to a shopping mall, all that data is available free. A lot of people don't use it. Second one, I need to tell you this story. It's a very good story. I think it was Adidas, but it may be another company. This company hired three engineers in the Hong Kong University to do a Facebook study of how to use running shoes. So they took all that, they bought the data from Facebook, which has got all the pictures, and the pictures will show you whether you are running, and in fact, the algorithm can show what shoe you are wearing. Point number one, they tell you what shoe you're wearing. The chances are you're wearing Nike, your Adidas, your Puma, et cetera, et cetera. Secondly, using that algorithm data of millions of photographs, they got the data when you need to buy the shoe. This is all Facebook data, I remember this. When you need to buy a shoe, when you last bought a shoe and when you next buy a shoe. When your next shoe is due and on your birthday, Adidas sent a Facebook message to them, happy birthday, here is a discount, buy the next shoe from me. You know how much sales of Adidas increased? 40%. How much did this study cost? Kacang pute. I mean, relative to the sales, it was peanuts. So if you got the brains, there are a lot of data that's available for you to mine. Okay? The second one is Google satellite data. Do you know that if, if you use Google satellite data, they could calculate how many cars are there outside uh, 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 Walmart. And so therefore, using that data, 
they predicted Walmart's revenue better than Walmart's own data. Okay, so there are also free data from IMF, World Bank, BIS. If you are an expert in getting that data, you have value already because most people don't know how to get it, right? There are also commercial data which you can collect. But if you have a corporate sponsor, you might be able to get that. Now, so you need to get the supervisors and the research advisor, all right? And that's where it's very critical. It's not about, it's not just about doing your research. You need people who can advise, okay? Now, Dr. Davey is very good, uh, but you know, you have very different areas. I noticed some of you, as I said, from construction, from logistics, from areas, right? So you do need very good people and we will try and find these people for you. But it, it's also very important if you as a group talk to each other, how to get ideas from this area. And I could help you, you know, you go to the website, your YouTube, go and find the information that you need, okay? But we will, we'll, this was something we'll do. So let me stop here. I don't think I have that much time, 10 minutes. Why don't you ask me questions? If, you, if I can't hear you, I can do this through chat. Okay, you can do this through chat. Okay. Morning, Tan Sri. Uh, hello from Singapore. Mm -hmm. I'm calls me Tan Sri. Um, I have a question uh, for you. Um, in, in your um, experience, right? Um, how does greed and agility, you know, um, contribute to you know uh, an entrepreneur? Like um, I am a venture capital, so I've been investing uh, for a long time. So the reason why I wanted to do this study is because for many years, I've seen um, many entrepreneurs and the way we invest. And then most of them die because they did not have the, the greed and the agility to actually pivot, although they have a fairly good uh, idea. So, but that is based on my uh, experience of seeing it. I am actually interested to actually drill down and, and do a research, especially uh, I'm from Malaysian, but I've been in Singapore for 20 years. So I, I wanted to see if, if what is Malaysian missing in, in you know, becoming entrepreneurial in, in the technology world? Is this something missing? Is it because we don't have enough uh, good universities, like you said, or is it because the, the mindset, the skill set, well, you know, um, I was having discussions with some, some engineers from Bayan Lepas and they made a very important comment. In hiring engineers the, from India, all the in, engineers from India every day are asking questions. I want to ask this question. I want to ask this question. You hire the engineers from China. They will also ask questions. Why is this technically like that? What is this like, like that? In Malaysia, they're sitting there, you're the teacher, tell me. Very different culture, okay? Now, it is not a culture because we do, our people don't have the talent. Malaysians are talented all over the world, okay? The talent of Malaysia is amazing, irrespective of race, color, creed, whatever, you know? I want to share this story with you. A very good friend of mine was the top Japanese guy. He was top executive for Exxon. He was chairman of the top the city bank in Japan, extremely successful. And you know, one day a fellow Japanese came up to him and said, you know, uh, we got hundreds of thousands of people like you. You know, you're not special. You know, and this guy told him, you know, the problem with talent, talent is not about individuals. Every Japanese is like me. But because you do not recognize the talent, these talent will never achieve their potential. Okay? So, Malaysians are very quiet, you know, they're very obedient. The teacher says, shut up. I am teaching you. This is nonsense. Today, the kid knows more about IT than the teacher. 
You get it? Right? So the teacher is now doing authority. I tell you this. All right? Now let me, in Singapore, you have the same problem. Right? You can be very good, but you are not allowed to fail. And that's nonsense. How can you have entrepreneurship that do not fail? We are all lessons of our mistakes, except that we survive 51% rather than die from the 49%. You get it? So failure is not a problem. Today in Silicon Valley, 40% of the hires have no degrees. They don't care about the degree. They care about who did you work with? What project did you work with? Have you failed? If you have not failed, you don't know how to succeed. And on the question of greed, let me say this, okay? The best entrepreneurs do not care about money. But EQ is very important, okay? Steve Jobs failed the first time round because he had zero EQ. He finally got it after he started failing. As you know, he got kicked out of, of, of Apple, right? And then the board realized without Steve Jobs' unique skills, Apple could not go to the next level, okay? So I haven't had to answer your question, but it's a difficult. So somebody will ask a question on finding good research topic. You know, uh, uh, um, uh, I, can I call you uh, Logai Swari or Indiran? Uh, right. Okay. The key, the good research topic. That's what I, I you know, I suggest you do. And maybe uh, Davy, if we can, um, if we, we can have a discussion after everybody pick their topic. Okay. And then we can have a group discussion on why we think it's good or bad. Uh, but the key question is, what are you interested in? Like, right, like, like Rina just now, you know, your, 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 your topic was very big. You know, when you talk about greed, it's a big topic. You know, how do you pin this down? And in my view, it's, it's not just greed. It really is not about greed. Success or failure depends upon individuals understanding their own strengths and weaknesses. A lot of people are great technicians. They, they fail because they have no finance ideas. They have no marketing ideas. They have no execution ideas. They have no idea about manufacturing. Okay. And they have no HR experience, how to manage a team. So the result is the guy is super because he or she's got the idea, but the others cannot follow. It's all about team building. And if you're an entrepreneur, you're by nature a leader. And if you are a leader, you have to eat humble pie. You have to accept that you are wrong. Okay, and it's not nice. A lot of people refuse to accept this. But if you do not accept that you are wrong, you cannot advance. Okay, so the most difficult thing, three things, three things. Number one, listen more. Number two, collaborate more. Number three, think long term. The guy who is working only short term is kacang pute. Kids playing, playing uh, what I call checkers. You put a small pawn in front of them, they take it straight away. That guy won't go nowhere. The guy who is thinking long term gives you the pawn, gives you the rook, but they take your queen. Get it? Right? So you have to think long term but you cannot do it by yourself. Nothing succeeds because you are alone. Everything succeeds because we work together. You get it? Networks, networks, networks. All right? So if you understand networks, you are already up to a second level. 
okay? And if you don't understand it, and the other side understand it, you're blown out of the water, okay? All right, so yeah, we, 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 we should have a longer term session. I don't know how long the, the time is available, but... Um, we have a lot of time. Sorry, uh, Davy. Uh, sorry, Davy. I seem to have lost Davy. I think yeah. we better. Uh, I, how I'm much here. time do we have? We can go for another half an hour. Okay. All right. All right. Let, me, let, let me let me look at the key questions first. All right. Uh, no, you know the 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 importance about research topic is that, okay, um, let me put it this way. It is very easy to write a four inch thick thesis, most of which would be not so important. It is very difficult to write one page what you want to say. Okay? So think about this. Why are some advertising work and some advertising don't work? And the answer is the message gets you. You get it. The minute you 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 get that advertisement, you get it. And sometimes you know the old fashioned Malaysian one you know, uh, with, a, with a, a doctor in white and a little kid, uh, Gigi. That's rubbish, okay, right? I mean, it's very old fashioned. I'm not saying it's rubbish, but it's old fashioned, right? A subtle message sometimes is better. So you notice some companies, when you after the ad, you don't even know what they're going for, but it doesn't matter, it tells you that the company is there. And you know, it's just about green, it's about calm, it's about trust. It's very subtle. So the key question is the, the message, the thesis, the question can be summarized in one page. Can you do it? That's an art in itself. The minute you learn to do that, you would have succeeded, okay? So a lot of people do a lot of work, right? And at the end of it, you know, you say, well, I don't know what I'm trying to achieve. So you keep on asking the question, what your research project, what question you want to ask and what answer do you want, right? Think through this. I can't answer this straight away, okay? But it's, it's very important that when you present, you actually say, I want to do this research project. You know, I don't know what, you know, it depends upon your area, right? So if I were the director of nursing, I, I, I saw that. It may be very well a good study, a case study on what was the stress results from the COVID on the nursing staff, on the doctors on the patients. That itself could be a very good study, right? And then, you know, you know I mean, some, some, certain things like that. I mean, you know, there, there are many, there are many, many interesting questions. I don't know your interest, so I can't answer for you, you see? That's, that's the point that I really, you know, want, want, want to make, right? <clears throat> Uh, Tan Sri, okay, uh, Kwa here, right? You know, I've been reading your, your, your wisdom articles in the staff quite frequently, right? So, you know, I just have a one question, right? You know, in one of your points, you talk about the quantitative versus qu uh, qualitative research, right? Uh, you mentioned trigger, good point, like, you know, quality research to brain, right? But do you agree that apart from the brain itself, right, all those peripherals is, is also important, right? So in order to report those findings, you know, you know for, especially for quality research, right? Uh, narration skills is to like in you know, writing a report and convincing, uh, to, you know, 
good enough so that you know whatever the qualitative aspects of the findings can be narrated uh, carefully into a proper thesis. What is your thought on this? Um, no, I mean, I mean, you know, the 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 a, a lot, of, you know, as you know, a PhD uh, program has two parts. One is the actual delivery of the um, delivery of the uh, thesis, and then. Uh, uh, next is a viva. I don't know whether Wawasan does this. You know what a viva is? A viva is when you actually have to defend before a panel of professors who are evaluating your work. Okay? They will have a viva. Yeah, good, good, good. Right? So, you know, if, um, uh, and, and, and some people have been known to fail because they can't pass their vivas. Right? Uh, um, and, 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 and so, you know, your, 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 your thesis will be evaluated on your, your, uh, whether you've done your proper literature survey, whether you've done your research methodology, spell it out clearly, the quality of your data, your quality of your analysis, you know, and as I said, at the bottom line of it, what's the story you're telling, okay? And so the Viva is basically to assess the quality of your analytical skills, okay? Now, you know, the, so, uh, you know, people need to understand that, yes, it's very technical, but it, at the bottom line, at the bottom of this is, yeah, this guy's got a doctorate, but he doesn't know what, he or she doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's why it's very important to be able to express very difficult ideas very simply. You know, that's what I learned. When I became the chairman of the Securities and Futures Commission in Hong Kong, I had to go before 20, 30 TV cameras with mics in front of me. Instant questions. Very tough questions. You have to know how to answer. You make one mistake tomorrow, they said this guy is no good. You know, this guy is cheating. This guy is, you know, misleading us. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you need to learn how to respond very quickly, and then you know when you have a very difficult problem, you got to go and see the financial secretary or the chief executive, who is the equivalent of prime minister. You only have five minutes to explain to him whether to devalue or not to devalue, or whether to close the stock exchange, and why. You cannot say, well, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, let me go and uh, do a research study uh, according to a, a Nobel laureate. Uh, the theory is this or that. No time. Yes or no. Do or don't. You get it? So then you ask, what is the technical issue? Let me share this with you. Okay. Real life story. The, 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 the 9 p.m. on 9-11, Hong Kong time. Somebody called me up, sir, New York has just gone on fire, bombing of the tower. Next morning, Hong Kong stock market opens. Do we open or do we close the market? Because guaranteed the stock market price will drop. Okay. Second question. If it's going to drop, how much will it drop? And if it drops so much, what is the implication on not just the stock market, but also the banking system? How do you answer that question? Very simple. You call up all your staff. What's your assessment? Da, 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 da. Okay. Then I call up some of the top bankers, top brokers. <coughs> What's your assessment, right? Then I called somebody I really trusted in London. I said, what's your view? The person said, very simple. The stock market, the stock market in Hong Kong comprises the main share is Hong Kong Shanghai Bank plus a few blue chips. These are 30%. In London, when there was news about Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, it dropped 15, 
30% or 15%, 5% drop. So maximum drop of Hong Kong stock market, 15%. Rough, rough thumb. Okay? 15% stock Hong Kong stock market drop. The brokers can handle it. The banks can handle it. No big deal. Decision? Continue to open. Okay? 7 a.m. in the morning, somebody call up from Japan, somebody call up from, 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 from Singapore, somebody call up from Malaysia, somebody call up from Thailand. Are you opening or closing? We said, we open. Some of them didn't open. Doesn't matter, right? As you know, two hours before Hong Kong, uh, three hours before, Sydney opens. One hour before, Tokyo opens, right? And I turn out to be right, the market dropped 15% and thereafter bounce back. No big deal. If we had closed the market, the implication was Hong Kong takut. You see what I'm trying to say? Right? The decision is uncertainty. You don't know what the truth is. You have to make that decision very quickly. All right? But you know which experts to ask, how to ask, think through the implications, and just go for it. And you cannot hesitate. This one, you cannot hesitate. Because if the boss asks you, he says, well, maybe, oh, you know, I have to ask the rest of the, I have to ask. No. You tell him, do this, and this will happen. And they say, okay, Andrew, I trust you. Go and do it. It's just like today, you know, we all trust, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, with the, uh, the Director General of Medicine, No Hashim, right? No Hashim, right? And you ask him, he will give you a very straight answer. And that's why he's very good. He's not wishy-washy, oh, I don't know, uh, let him wait, uh, uh, you know, ask the staff. Okay, let me give you a very simple trick. You, you know whose boss is good or not boss? Is a good boss or the bad boss? By a very simple thing. Watch his eyes or her eyes. If when they are asked a tough question, they go and ask, hey, what answer? Oi, what answer? That guy doesn't know what he's doing. Same thing when you go before the Viva. If I ask you a question, you say, well, maybe this data like that, that data like that. You might not pass. You have to know your facts and figures like that. If you don't know, say you don't know. You check. But don't lie. Uh, Andrew, uh, can, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Um... As we know that this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, has uh, taken a toll on the global economy on the uh, unprecedented scale, sure. uh, uh, probably due to the uh, lockdown imposed uh, in many countries. And then the uh, uh, most uh, economy will probably uh, slip into uh, contraction for year 2020, probably except China. And then, um, notwithstanding this, I, I, we can see that the uh, stock market around the world has also uh, skyrocketed uh, to the new height every now and then. Um, uh, 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 probably due to the, uh, the, the pledge of the Fed to, for the unlimited uh, QE. And, and uh, in relation to this also, the, uh, I think many economies have... Uh, uh, they hold the view that the uh, global economy would actually stage a strong rebound in next year, um, predicated on the release of the uh, vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine. So um, what is your take on the outlook of the uh, global economy uh, next year, uh, in particularly to uh, Malaysia? Uh, and, and also, I think we, we just know that Malaysia's uh, sovereign rating has been uh, downgraded by one notch to uh, uh, triple B plus from A minus uh, yesterday's by Fitch. So what is your take? Well, on the rating agencies, my view about rating agencies is that um, uh, they depend upon their process. You know, the process is called credit rating agency process, C-R-A-P. You get it? 
the rating agencies never tell you anything you don't know, right? The real issue is what is Malaysia really doing, you know, in this global scenario? And people forget this. Malaysia is paradise. It's the luckiest country in the world. It's got lots of natural resources. It's got a very young population. It actually is very hooked into the global supply chain. Every time we've gotten into trouble, we have discovered new products that the government didn't necessarily plan. Okay, right? Give you an illustration. We had rubber and tin. Okay, then we discovered oil. Then we discovered palm oil. Then we had the electronic factories, right? And today, what do we have? We have rubber gloves, right? And look at what has happened. The, the Malaysia has not only got its own tech companies, um, I mean, the, the Intels and Motorola's, which are the companies that are growing fastest in the chaos on exchange? The tech companies, correct? Right? So actually, Malaysia has got a lot of going for it. If you look at some of our products, we should be very proud of Malaysian product. They grew in spite of government. I always say this, okay? I mean, you know, you go to the supermarket, what is the best biscuit you can get? Either Julie's or Manchis. What is the best coffee you can get? Malaysian white coffee. You know, I drink coffee with, uh, uh, on the internet with my friends in Hong Kong. They say, hey, wait a minute, I'm gonna get my coffee. He says, Ipo white coffee, you know? I mean, the point is, Malaysians actually are very good indeed. It's just that we haven't appreciated them very, very much, okay? There are plenty of skills, there are plenty of talent that be recognized. And that's why I believe that, you know, we need to get, release your energy, release your, your ideas, and make you blossom. A lot of us didn't do well because sometime in our career, some of our bosses saying, you bodoa. You know, I'll tell you this, this happened to me, okay? I was an article clerk. I gave my paper to, the, to, to my leader. And when he read it, I heard him, shit, rubbish. Don't know what he's doing. Literally in front of me, I was behind waiting for him to finish the review. I'm sorry to use his bad words, but that's what he told me, frankly speaking, okay? And then he threw the working papers on my desk and said, do this again. That was my beginning because I then said, I'm gonna prove this fellow that I can do better than him. You get it? When people tell you, bad things, it's not that you are bad. It's you need to learn. The person who keeps on telling you are very good, very good, very good is not necessarily helping you. The person who is willing to tell you what you don't know, what you don't understand, and how you do this is your savior. However difficult it is to accept. All right? So don't worry about Malaysia. Malaysia is very well plugged into the global economy. East Asia is the growth zone, okay? I don't know what's gonna to happen to America. I don't think America will do well. Europe will not do well. China is still growing. China's supply chain is very, very critical. China is Malaysia's biggest trading partner. As long as China is doing okay, we should be okay, right? I mean. You know, yes, we got some problems with the rubber glove companies, but do you think the COVID will go away and they will not need rubber gloves when Latin America is having problems, Africa is having problems, Middle East having problems, they'll still need rubber gloves, right? So I think, you know, we must have confidence in ourselves. I don't criticize people. You notice my articles, I rarely criticize people. I may criticize Trump, you know, but what I try to pose for people is you need to assess the 
the picture, try and understand what is good, what is bad, and then move forward, right? No point worrying about past mistakes. We all make mistakes. We all have our weaknesses. None of us are perfect. We, you know, so the, 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 the point is, don't worry too much about Malaysia. We do need to worry how we're going to help our, our own people. Okay, now, it is very serious. The COVID is very, very bad on the bottom 50% of the society. That is absolutely true. Okay, right? There are limits of what we can do. So we, we, we each do our own thing. Okay, I'm trying to help the university to, to turn it around. I'm being very frank here. I'm trying to turn it around because the university is the best place, you know, in Penang, right? And it's, it's meant to go digital. So now we can go digital. We have a very good leadership team now, right? Uh, Davy herself is a you know, new uh, uh, intake. We're bringing in a new team to come in and transform the system, right? The, 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 the issue is now organization and management. Give us a little bit of time, we should be able to do it. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm think, I think time is uh, last four minutes. Yeah, uh, Andrew, Tan Sri Andrew, I have one quest, last question for you, right? You know, I've been following your article and Tan Sri uh, uh, Sing Li Yang, right? So, you know, one thing is that, you know, we noticed that throughout these sessions, you know, you are very energetic, you're very sharp and quick with it. So, any hint? No hint. I mean, the point is that we are all born, uh, uh, you know, a lot of our, our, uh, a lot of our makeup depends upon our genes. I'm very lucky that my parents had very good uh, left to me, especially my mother, uh, even when she was you know, 80 plus, had uh, excellent uh, blood pressure. So uh, the energy there is, is, is partly that, I guess. Uh, but as long as we breathe, I think we need to uh, share some of those lessons that we made. I'm sharing with you a lot of mistakes I made, okay? Some, you know, some things I did right, but there are a lot of other things that we, we haven't had a chance to, to share yet. So, uh, you know, ho hope that you can do better in your, 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 your research program and anything we can do to help you, you know, we'll try, okay? Thank you, we've taken so much of your time, Tanstri. Not at all. I'm glad the, uh, so, you know, uh, let's 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 make another round when the, the time comes, yeah. and when when everybody is prepared to to get their their thesis. You know, as I said, summarize your 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 proposal, research proposal, in not more than two sheets of paper. You know what you're what trying to answer, what your comparative advantage is in doing this work, and then what you know what the hypo, hypo, hypothesis. You know, and what answers do you want to give? And then we can evaluate and maybe we can talk about how, how we can, you know, find, find you the right uh, uh, supervisors or people who can help you in this issue. Okay.